Thanks very much, Tim, and uh, welcome everyone to today's Small Cap Hidden Gems webinar. Uh, I'm going to start, I suppose, in the clouds, and we'll get down into the, the detail of these interesting businesses as, as we go through the, the next uh, half an hour or so. But uh, I suppose just starting with the global macro situation, my role here as Chief Investment Officer at Shore and Partners is, I suppose, to try and set the sales for our advisors and clients in terms of what sort of portfolio positioning they should be taking on what, what the sort of risks are that they should be thinking about in terms of their portfolios and where the opportunities might lie. So at a very, very high level, we need to think firstly about playing offensively or defensively, or are we sort of leaning into markets or are we leaning away from them? So the things we really look at here are a global growth. Um, there's a number of different ways to look at that. There's things like the purchasing managers indexes or indices, such as the one that came out of China today that showed the Chinese economy is starting to re-accelerate after months and months of slowing down. So that's one interesting read on growth. Um, there's obviously things like earning analyst earnings estimates, and, and that's quite interesting at the moment because the economic data that's coming through shows that you know, consumption spending in Australia and some other countries is holding up quite well, but we know that companies are getting very, very nervous about the outlook going forward. So what analysts are seeing from companies in terms of earnings estimates and thirdly, really, is look is leading indicators. There's a couple of groups globally that put together statistics that are designed to try and interpret whether they think the economy is going, whether it's speeding up or slowing down. So the conference board in the United States is one such group. The OECD in, um, in France is another one. So we look at those measures as well. Now, pretty much across the board, they're all pointing to slower growth. So we, we are seeing expectations of global growth continuing to slow we're obviously hampered by supply chain issues, COVID restrictions, and you know, very patchily coming out of out of COVID lockdown. So we are seeing global growth um, continuing to slow, um, and that's just I suppose one caution. The second thing we look at is financial conditions, which, very simply put, is is it easier or harder to get money, and is it easier or harder to um, you know, sorry, more expensive or cheaper to secure that money? So if we think back in Australia two years ago you could lock in a four-year four fixed-rate mortgage uh, for less than 2%. There were some of my colleagues that managed to lock in sort of 1.8%, 1.9% mortgage rates for four years fixed. So that same loan today, a four-year fixed mortgage, is more like 4% than, uh, than 2%. So even though the Reserve Bank's only increased rates to 0.85%, mortgage rates in that sector of the market have doubled. And that's what we're seeing around the world. So we're seeing financial conditions, whether you're a borrower or you're a corporate um, or you're trying to access money, um, you know, consumer lending, et cetera, all of these uh, forms of credit are becoming more expensive and more difficult to get. So we've gone from having a world that was awash with money to it's now getting a lot tighter. And again, markets don't like tightening financial conditions. So I suppose that's warning, nine, some, warning sign number two. And the last thing we, we consider in terms of the positioning is central banks. So central banks are pretty basic um, beasts. They have a dual mandate. They have to create as much uh, employment as they can without overheating the economy and causing inflation. So right now, of course, you would know that we've got inflation sort of out of control. It's running at almost 9% in Europe, 8% in the US, 5 or 6% in Australia. And that's well above um, central banks' target ban. So with full employment, they're, you know, it's pretty obvious what they're going to do. They're going to tighten rates. And again, the market doesn't like it. When the, when the central banks are tightening rates, we much prefer them to be cutting rates. You're better off buying shares in a recession than at the top of the boom, for example. So those three things are what we use to set, set the sales, if you like. And at the moment, we're just a little bit defensive. It doesn't mean we're not invested. We're pretty much fully invested for our clients, but we might be a little bit more defensive. We might have a bit more fixed income and floating rate notes and a bit more in energy and these sorts of sectors that are inflation hedges. So the second part of what with you know the way we're guiding people is in terms of the allocation to stocks within a portfolio. So if I think of the Aussie equity market, we've got a bunch of stocks which have proven to be a fantastic hedge against the rising inflationary expectations we've seen in the past uh, six or so months. So even though markets have been sold off in almost every region and almost every asset class in the past six months, the energy sector is up about thirty percent. So it has proven to be a very good hedge against inflation, not just this year, but also historically, because it's often the cause of the inflation is the energy prices shooting up. So that's done very well. The utilities sector, which is very defensive, 
has a lot of companies that can move their prices up by inflation. So think about uh, Australian pipelines or Transurban, they're all inflation linked um, the revenues. So the utilities and the energy sector have actually gone up this year. Everything else, as you would probably know, is down and in some cases down quite heavily. So we're just sort of um, moving, I think, from a, um, a concern about inflation hedging to a concern more about economic growth. Because as I said earlier, companies are starting to get nervous about the outlook. And the major reason for that is these interest rate hikes and the impact of inflation. So anyone who's filled a car up with petrol uh, in the past couple of weeks will know, you know, the horror story of you're going well over 100 in some cases, $200 to fill your car up. And, then, and multiply that right across the food inflation we're seeing and so forth. And also, if you've got a mortgage, you're probably looking at a doubling or even tripling of your interest payments in the next couple of years as well. So people are getting very nervous about that. And central banks are obviously still fighting inflation. So the concern in portfolios is now shifting from inflation as the biggest risk to growth being the biggest risk. So really, you look at stocks that do well in a downturn, and they're typically businesses with a good business model with a, in a growth sector of the market, and they have the capacity to pass on higher prices to their customers. It's called pricing power. So tip, you know, again, we, we talked about the utilities. So APA pipelines trust 100% of their revenue is linked to inflation, and yet it doesn't cost them a lot more to run their pipelines. Transurban with the toll roads, 80, 90% of those tolls are linked to inflation, doesn't cost them any more to run the roads. So they're really good investments. But we're also thinking in healthcare, things like uh, healthcare equipment such as um, ResMed or CSL in the, in the pharmaceutical space. Those companies do well. Amcor in the industrials area have very good pricing power because of the nature of their business. Uh, Bramble's in the pallet. So there's quite a few companies that will do well, uh, relatively speaking, in a downturn. So I suppose to put that in a nutshell and, and, and to pass back, um, just a little bit more defensive on the position, just being a bit more cautious. Um, you know, markets will probably continue to be volatile. So we're staying defensive within equity portfolios, maybe thinking more about um, am I recession proof? Is my business recession proof? And I'm sure some of the stocks we're here today will have a, a pretty good growth story, should see them perform well uh, during a downturn. So with that, I'll pass back to you, Tim. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for that. It's always good to get an expert's opinion on what is a uh, very volatile market. 